For the very first time since my family experienced some financial struggles in high school, something happened recently. We're sorry. You have reached a number that has been disconnected or is no longer in service. Yes, you heard that right. My phone was disconnected. No calls from clients, no calls from family members. Couldn't do anything. But how in the world did someone like myself allow their phone to get disconnected? What does this have to do with sales? Why is this even important to discuss? Now, this is way more than sales, and it's way more than just another episode. It's the fact that people, people matter the most, and sometimes we overlook this in our sales process. And a certain company, which I will name in this episode, did not think about an individual or think about their needs, did not think about the history or the relationship. They just offered bad customer service, and that caused me, yes, to look for a new cell phone company. Listen why. We're sorry. You have reached a number that has been disconnected or is no longer in service. This episode is brought to you in part by MailTag.io. Essentially, it's a tool that allows you to see around the corner. Want to know when someone opens your email? Or perhaps, maybe there's a link to your proposal. Want to know when they click on it? MailTag.io gotcha. Take advantage of a 14-day free trial. Simply go to MailTag.io. This episode is also brought to you in part by TSE Certified Sales Training Program. If you feel that your sales are in a slump, 2018 wasn't the best year. Perhaps you gave some amazing presentations. You did a lot of hard work, but still yet they left you and went with the competition. We can fix that. Check out TSE Certified Sales Training Program. We have a new semester beginning in April, and it would be an absolute honor to have you join. Go to the salesevangelist.com slash C as in certified, S as in sales, T as in training. The salesevangelist.com slash C S T. Hey, 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 everyone. Welcome to another great episode of the Sales Evangelist Podcast. I'm your host, Donald Kelly, the Sales Evangelist. And I'm so excited for another great episode. I'm so excited to be here with you today and to tell you how my cell phone got disconnected, why this tied back to bad customer experience and what you should know so you don't fall into this category. Now, before I get into the story, I want to just let you set the record straight and let you know that I'm doing this because of two main reasons. One, I feel that there's a sales principle that ties directly with what we're discussing this month about client success or about customer service and giving that amazing experience. You can learn some stuff from this if you're a sales leader or if you're a business owner or if you're a sales rep, you can take this back to your team and to help them to recognize what they should do to put the customer first. The second thing I believe is my moral obligation because I feel that large companies sometimes don't necessarily care for the small individuals. And with a platform like this, it's my moral obligation to at least let this incident be known. Since I was in the sixth grade, the sixth grade, my mom got me a pager. And you know what that pager was with? You guessed it. It was with Bell South back then. Yeah, it was cool. I felt like I was the, the bomb.com. I had this little little pager that people could reach out to me on and I can make you know fake little text message and things like that. And it was exciting. Then when I got into the seventh grade, I got my first cell phone and it was a prepaid phone. And you guessed it, it was with Bell South. And eventually they became AT&T at that point and or AT&T bought them out. And I had now an AT&T service. Since the seventh grade, when I upgraded to the brick, you know what I went with, right? You know those brick Nokia phones? Yes, sir. I was with AT&T again. Fun prepaid plan as a kid, had my minutes. Text messages were in its infancy, and it was just an amazing time. It was awesome. Loved it. Fast forward. I went to college, went to school way out in Idaho, and I used, guess what company? AT&T. However, there was an issue where there weren't a lot of cell towers and AT&T canceled the services, which I totally understood. So they said I can get out of my contract. I went with Verizon for about a year and a half. After that experience with Verizon, which wasn't too bad, just a little pricey. But after a little while, the cell phone coverage of AT&T grew in this area of Idaho. And I was doing work with a door-to-door security company and they required us to have an application, which was on the iPhone. I had to go back and it was exciting. I got back with AT&T, had the brand new iPhone, felt like a king, felt cool. 
Naturally, I kept my service with AT&T even after I left this company, and it was it, it just worked out perfect. And for years, I used AT&T. My family used AT&T. Everyone used AT&T. We had internet. We had Uverse. Everything was AT&T. Don't talk bad about my AT&T services. We moved into a new area, and it was an HOA, and the only service that you could get for your internet was Comcast. So we went with Comcast. It was a sad day. I lost my Uverse. But the day came when Uverse was coming back in our area, and I was super, super excited. Now, like any major company, things happen, and in the industry, things change. So we recognize just some of the stuff weren't the same. But you know what? We rolled with the punches. We just ignored them and kept moving on. So it came down to the end of the year last year. And as you know, a lot of the plans have changed in the industry. There's a the whole leasing of the phone, and that has always been there. But now it's just a little bit more different, a different structure. My wife was getting an upgrade on her phone. We discussed my phone while I was there, and turns out that hey, they have a prepaid plan. If I pay off my phone, I can just use the prepaid plan. It's $45 a month. It made sense for an unlimited plan. I've used unlimited plans ever since I was in college. It's an automatic withdrawal, so it's set up on your bank account, and we're all cool with that. You get text notification to let you know that the transaction was going to happen, so you can be prepared. And many of you may know, but South Florida has this reputation for some fraudulent activities at times, and we saw fraudulent activity on our bank card. This was during the holiday season, so we decided to go ahead and to cancel the card and to get a new one sent out immediately. We had a temporary card set up. You get where I'm getting with this. Many of us have different vendors or different companies that we pay and we use our debit cards or our credit cards. And when they expire, sometimes we don't get a chance to fix them all right away because you just don't remember. Yes, lesson learned. You keep track of that stuff so you can discuss it in your weekly or monthly family budget discussion. I hope you guys are doing that. But it's something that I've come to realize is important that you're on the same page with your family members, your spouse, your partner on your finances. This podcast is not about finance, but this is something we've done ever since we were married and I've done budgeting ever since I was in high school. So about two weeks ago, at the end of January, when we're going into the next month, my phone was disconnected. My wife tried to get a hold of me and she couldn't get through. I had friends and people who were reaching out to me. They couldn't get through to me. She sent an iMessage and I was over Wi-Fi and was able to realize that my phone was disconnected. I went ahead then and called AT&T right away. Yes, there's some, I'm not going to disagree that there's some issues on my part and I should have been prepared for this and I should have kept track of all of this stuff and I should have understood and should have went into details to learn all of their policy. But here's what happens. When I called AT&T, I found out that because my plan was one day expired, well, not even one day, like hours expired, then they decided to cancel my services without notifying me at all. Well, since this was a prepaid plan, guess they don't do that if it's a prepaid plan. It was a promotion that I signed up for in December that they were running. $45 a month, unlimited everything, maintained the same type of service that I had before, I thought. The individual that I spoke with then was able to let me know, you can go ahead and pay right now and get your services started back up at $65 per month. And again, $65 is not going to break the bank. I was paying $110 before. It was the principle of the matter. When I asked why this was the case, he said, because my plan expired. I started to put two and two together. And I said, well, if I had fixed or if I paid this maybe 10 hours before, would I have still received the $45? He said, yes, it was a promotion. But because I expired my plan, because I did not pay in time, this was the consequence. I wasn't able to get that promotional rate again. It's gone. I asked if understanding my history with the company ever since, again, the sixth grade, if he was able to still give me any type of leeway and still recognize the promotion, understanding that I was set up on a automatic withdrawal, but because we switched our bank card and did not set up the new one in the system, still no. Stone cold. I figured... Let's go ahead and just not talk anymore with this guy. I'll call back later and speak to someone else. But no, the same idea. He said, I cannot help you. I have to pay the higher rate. As I looked around, I've never ever really thought about leaving my AT&T services. I've been with them for years. But I had to reflect and I had to think, why am I so loyal to a company that doesn't have any type of loyalty or recognize any type of care for me? 
why would I stay with an organization when there are many different companies out there and some of them are willing to give competitive rates that rival what they have and also give you free Netflix? Obviously, I needed my phone back on for work and for connection and so forth. So I went ahead and paid a higher rate. I was wasting way too much time going through this battle with different customer service folks when I needed to get to my clients. Long story short, I decided to break this relationship. And since I have this prepaid plan and there's clearly no obligation to stay with AT&T, I'm courting new companies, and one of them is T-Mobile. To validate this point even more, I brought the topic to social media, and it turns out a large whopping number of people just love and rave about T-Mobile. One of the other disheartening things with AT&T is that recently in my area, I've had an increase in drop calls, and there are certain parts of the city where my phone will just not work at all. It makes sense. It's time for a change. The lesson behind all of this... Remember that your customers, your clients, they're people. Unfortunately, culture often change, especially with companies. Some of them are stuck in archaic way of thinking. Once we thought great civilizations like Rome or the Greeks or any major great civilization, we never think that they will ever fall, that they would deviate from their standards, that they would become, lose their reign. And unfortunately, we see that happen. And in the case of a business, We see that happening too. When you rest on your laurels and you don't seek to improve or you don't seek to bring about quality customer service or you forget about people, they're going to leave and they're going to go to other organizations that can give them that attention. Organizations that are a little bit more nimble, more flexible. Organizations that are not rigid in their old archaic way of thinking. Organizations that actually care about them. That's what's happening with this scenario. In your case, in your company right now, Do you find that you guys are stuck in your old ways or are you being nimble and caring about the people? Are you flexible? Are you willing to help your customers? Or do you feel that you guys are the most important and people need to bend towards your ways? If you are stuck in that mentality, I encourage you, I admonish you to change that way of thinking. This month, as we're focusing on client success and about customer service, don't be like the large organizations out there that can throw a lot of ad dollars and get a lot of people in at the top of the funnel but then have them go right out the back door. Don't do that. I encourage you to evaluate the way that you're treating your clients. Evaluate the way that your company's policies are set up. Evaluate, are you putting the people who pay you first? If not, you need to. Perhaps one of you work with AT&T, or you have family members or friends or someone you know who's an executive at AT AT&T. Let them know what's going on. Let them know that their customer service sucks and that people like myself with a platform It's going to say it, and we're going to go with other providers. T-Mobile, you're up next. Let's go ahead and chat. Let's go ahead and see if this relationship can work out. Looking forward to hearing all the great things and to see if I can get that free Netflix account. I share this stuff with you because I really want to help you. I tell you about tools like MailTag.io because I want to help you to become more effective and to become the best seller you possibly can. I want you to be able to take advantage of it. There's a 14-day free trial that you can test it out for yourself. But once you test it out and you fall in love with it, go ahead and use promo code Donald at checkout for half off your subscription for life. I want you to find more ideal customers. I want you to retain those customers. (laughs) I want you to be able to say the right things to build value and to have meaningful relationship with your clients. I want you to close more deals. But most importantly, it's to challenge you each and every single day to go out and do big things. Stay tuned for a scene from our next episode. It's being able to relate with people, like bringing up a relatable objection as well. So that maybe part is like listening fully to the objections and your first reaction when you hear an objection made, you know, you don't want to jump right in and respond immediately. You have to understand it completely. And that's really what I'm good at is just being able to listen because I've been on multiple calls with with individuals, people that are trying to enroll me or sell me into their programs or their products and being more empathetic to people as well. It's just it helps your chances to be able to actually build a relationship with people. I 
hope you enjoyed the show today as much as I did. And if so, I ask you a little favor, just something simple. Go ahead and leave us a rating and review on Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, Spotify, Stitcher, or wherever you listen to podcasts like this. If you haven't done so already, go ahead and hit subscribe and show your coworkers and your friends how they can subscribe as well. It goes a long way when people come back and they say, you know what, someone told me about the show and it absolutely helped me tremendously. That means a lot. Please help us spread the word. Our show today was produced by myself and the Sales Podcast Network. It was edited and mixed together by the one and only Mr. Jershon O'Bale. Our content writer and show note creator is Mr. Shannon Rasmussen. You can find audio credits to this and all of our episodes in each show notes. And as always, I am your host, your coach, your mentor, your guide down the sales journey, Mr. Donald C. Kelly, the sales evangelist. Sales Podcast Network.